I take this opportunity to welcome you to join with us as we receive the word of God by his servant, our bishop, Bishop Peter Gatimu, and we are coming live from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi, Kenya. And we thank God because you have been there, you have been receiving this word, and we are sure that God has been blessing you. And today is yet another day that the Lord wants to bless you through his word, because his word is alive, it's active, and the Bible says it is sharper than any edge, uh, any edge sword. It is able to pierce through the heart and to the, every area of our lives, and therefore it's able to bring help and even deliverance and healing that we require in our lives today. Therefore, brother and sister, wherever you are, prepare yourself, have your Bible ready, have your pen and notebook, because God is going to speak to us in a mighty way, and the Lord is going to release a prophecy in your life, and healing is coming your way. Let us pray as we welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you this afternoon. We bless you because you are God, Jehovah Elohim. You are the creator, we are the works of your heart, Father. And because you own us and you know us by our names, we submit unto you, Lord God Almighty, that you may speak to us this afternoon. Have your way, Lord, be thou glorified. We commit your servant into your hands, Father, as he comes over to minister, Lord, use him to bless the church. In Christ we pray and give thanks. Let us welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, bishop. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you so much. We, we thank God for you all. The Lord is so kind to us. He is so faithful, and we have seen the Lord walk with us. We are living at times where, just like Moses, we can claim and tell God, Lord, unless you walk with us, we cannot leave this place. That's very important, and we have seen God not only walking with us, but God affirming, confirming committing himself that he is with us. Even, even when, we, when we did know, but God just confirmed, even if we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, he is with us there. The instruments we need to go through that valley are available. We thank God for that. And we want to share the word of God today with you all. I know you have subscribed to our YouTube and you have caused others to do so. First of all, we want to thank you for your prayers and um, about the project that we have, the 10,000 seater project in Nairobi. And I tell you, we had a wonderful meeting on 12th of February, that is Sunday. We raised millions. Some of you are still sending the support. Make sure if you have not done it, do it. Send it direct to our account. You get the details. Remember, it is now. Now, I was telling people, any dream or vision has three, uh, has three stages. The first stage is to receive the dream. The second stage is to understand the dream. Understand the dream, its purpose, its content, its timing, its nature the level of commitment. The third stage of the dream is now to do it. It's when God says, now the dream must be fulfilled. Now the vision must be put to work. Now God wants to make it actual. Now, that's what we are telling you now. Brothers and sisters, we are not in the first stage. We are not in the second stage. That is about the 10,000 seater church in Nairobi. We are in the third stage. Remember, the first one is receiving the message, the vision. The second one is understanding it very well. And that's why in the Bible, when the angel came to Daniel, if you read Daniel chapter 10, you know that chapter, when that angel arrived, he said, I have come to give you understanding. To give who? Uh, Daniel. So there's that part where God comes 
to give you understanding. But now we are in the third stage whereby God is saying, it is now. It is now. It is now. And therefore, all partners, all friends, I say it is now. We did that money now because already the, 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 the document the, the, the document of ownership is in the name of the church. You, well, those who have seen in the YouTube, the house is enormous. It's big. I tell you, 10,000 seater sanctuary can cause great blessing in your family, in your life. Can you do this? You have a, you have a persistent need. You have a very stubborn family issue. You have a curse that you are dealing with and you don't know what to do. I promise you and try it. Try it if you don't have enough faith. Just do it by faith. Plant in this sanctuary now. We have to pay a lot of money, more than 3 million US dollars. And right now we need allowed almost 900 thousand US dollars right now, which is about maybe uh, 120,000 Kenya shillings, and that money is available because if you are available, the money is available. God will use you. The two, the two is available for God. Money is available. Be an instrument. Do it now. I say it's now because we need to pay that loan and have the actual practice of what God said. We already know the 10,000 people are out. And when you start it, it is working. So get the bank details. God will bless you. Today, we want to have a message on when life becomes complicated. When life and in, in life, you can put the word ministry, you can put the word family, you can have the family, you can, when the family get complicated, when, when ministry get complicated, when situations get harder, but we are saying when life become complicated. One, uh, we understand and we admit that God has designed life in a, in a progressive way. And in that progress, there are seasons assigned to any stage of life. And also the world. The world also has its own issues. Today, as I drove from my house, we are sharing with another lady who's, who arrived from America the other day. And said, now, the weathers are becoming extreme. Like now in the month of February, right in Kenya, we are supposed to have some rains. Some range, some range. And in the old, we knew how God, the pattern of rain. Like now the one that we used to receive in February, they, they, they used to call, to, to refer it as rain, not for harvest, not for any major production, but for animals. They said it is rain to assist the animals. It will cause visitation around and animals will survive. But now, instead of having that, it is extremely dry and extremely hot. In the month of June and July, we used to have mild, cold weather, moderately cold. But now these days, our, our July, our winter in Kenya is just almost like what is going on in Washington. It's extremely cold. We have those extreme weathers. And, and the world is becoming, uh, uh, you know, men may not control the world, the weather, but we are supposed to be responsible about the weather. And somebody was saying the morning that because of destroying the vegetation, the water catchment areas, destroying the, the ozone layer, destroying the world the way God set it. Men and women should be responsible of keeping the world the way they found it. And because we have the image of God, making it better because we are instrument of God through his image to make the world better. And to make the world better is not to kill people. It's not to reduce population. No. It's to make 
the world better for a larger population. Don't worry. If we are able to turn the deserts to make them habitable, let's do it. If we are able to plan, and because well, no, the capitalism system, some people own large farms, it's okay if they rightly own them. I think what you should do is to improve the minds of people. People should not be lazy, and let's create an environment for hard work and achievement, and things will be okay. Nevertheless, there is, there is, there will always be a situation where life becomes complicated, and maybe your mind may not be able to comprehend, to handle it, to contain it, sometimes to suppress it. And this is causing a lot of like psychosomatic diseases, whereby elderly people, middle life men and women, are now sick. Psychosomatic, whereby you, your mind is unable to handle. What do we do now? <coughs> I'd like to give some spiritual guidance and then we embark on other issues. It's good to raise your life in a way that the energy you have, the knowledge you have, the capacity you have has what we call a reserve. A reserve. Now, majority of the world economy, some of the responsible governments, they don't have food just enough for the moment. They have food and planning not just for the moment, but for crisis in case it comes. Now, I don't know what will happen. I, I know their government, I, 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 had, I, I was in a country where the government said they have a plan. If this get worse, they are able to feed their citizens for the next 10 years without any strife. A less possible government that has value for life. Government involves individuals who lead on the top. If somebody is at the top pinnacle of government and that person has no calling for that leadership, they are there for shellfish, gains, and whatever. Survival is dangerous. And we pray that those who are in the government, presidents, kings, and prime ministers, will come up with a system and philosophy and planning that truly will show that the government care for the citizens and the survival people. Now, build a reserve. Now, if you check in Matthew 25, the Bible talks about the wise and the foolish virgins. If you check carefully, the difference between wisdom and foolishness in Matthew 25 is is ability to foresee crisis. Ability to foresee crisis. Now, the Bible says, it's true. If people who live in this world, the youth who live in this world, has capacity to foresee, to discern, and to foresee the demands of life, the crisis that can, can arise, and, and you are able to see now the rate of inflation, the rate of commercial value, where now things are getting expensive day by day, you should prepare to live. Instead of people preparing themselves to live, they are just living. I'm saying there are times God gives every young man to prepare to live. How do you prepare? One, there are several areas that require inference. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. The way you keep your mind, your body, and your, and your heart, and the way you manage your life can demonstrate clearly whether you are preparing to live. The world is not hidden from you. You can see now what used to cost maybe $10,000 is now costing $100 within a year. What used to a car? The other day we bought a car, a car at a value of Kenya shillings, 1.2 million, 
which now is costing within one year 2.8 million within one year. That is not hidden from any person. It's clear even to a teenager. And that's why when we are raising young people, let us expose themselves to the reality. Take them loud. Tell them, no, this used to cost $10,000 last year. Within one year, it's costing maybe $200,000. Let's have simple mathematics that you cause a young man to comprehend, to understand he is living in a world where he has to be responsible. Let it be known to him that there's nothing free. Nothing will work for itself unless we work for late. Let people know that work is not a curse. Work is part of creation. If you go to Genesis chapter 2, Bible talks about, and God placed man in the garden and commanded the man to keep the garden and to till it. I say to you, red and every young man, no. There's need for three things. The garden there is, and the work in the garden and the keeping of the garden. Keep and till it. And God has said, I give law to keep in the garden. There are things to do. There are things not to do if you have to live long life in blessings. That's very important. So let's go back to Matthew 25. It says, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to, the, to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. We need now to differentiate between, in this context, what causes foolishness and what causes wisdom. The Bible says, those who are foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Lamp, let's draw this to our situation now. Lamp, you took lamp and you took no oil. That's cause foolishness. And those who are wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now, we need to see the difference now. When we are growing up, we need to build a lifestyle that I refer to taking the lamp with oil. Taking life with capacity to perform. Because when you have oil in the lamp, it shows this lamp is meant to produce light. It has capacity to produce what it is supposed to produce when at the right time. You young girl who is raising up. I was showing another young girl today and I said, she is a house help. I said, I want, I said, do you have your dad? I said, no, my dad. My mom and dad separated. And we went with my mom. You know, there are so many situations whereby we have had this issue. This girl, this woman, lived with another man and then married later to another man and relocated with the children of that other man to this second man. And somehow, if there's no enough strength, enough support, that new father mistreats these children that came with, the, with, the, with their mother to the new residence. And um, what is so painful is when I receive girls who have been raped by that stepfather, or whatever name you give to that man. He said, Bishop, can I? He said, has anybody known this? No. Bishop, I'm just sharing with you that man broke my virginity. That man have mistreated me. Yes. We had an issue in one of the slums in this country where a man brought several friends, men, and they raped her daughter, her stepdaughter. 
said, you rape this girl, Maxwell. He does, she does not belong to me. She came with her mother. That girl reported that very late. Very late. And um, we need to build every young girl, every young man who is growing up with this kind of lifestyle, a lamp that has oil in it. In this manner, when this person lives on five years later, there will be something in that person. Uh, we had a fundraising, and I, I was so much encouraged to see some of the teenagers give a lot of money. So, you know, my sister, the other day you were in school, yes. Now you have all this money, yes. God is blessing me. People who are living, knowing any time, when I get to 20 years, when I get to 30 years, when I get to 40 years of age, there will be a demand that will require something that I have accumulated for several years. Knowledge, capacity, exposure, all these things, finances, ability to do things, ability to handle crisis, ability, the other types of studying the young people. Teenage, actually, teenage mind seizes at the age of maybe 22 or 23. At the age of 18, you look like a good boy, good man. You can get married sexually, you can perform, you look better. But the actual mind to handle marriage, most likely starts at, at, at an average person, starts at, at the age of maybe 22, 23. Whereas now you develop a less possible mind to carry your body. At the age of 18, teenager, you have a lot of emotions, but mind that has no capacity to be responsible. You know, you get, if, if you get a, give a teenager some money, they will just spend it emotionally. You go to any place where there are these hostels for young people. Fight them around during, at night. They don't care. They don't care. I saw some you know, in, in, in Vika, Vika, you know, it's a highway in our country. In the evening when I was driving, I was driving at, at midnight. Oh, you find university girls almost naked in the street. Prostitution. They don't care. They don't care so much. They don't care. And maybe they have been raised by parents who somehow in their youth life never cared a lot. You know, that is a propagation of problem. I'm a parent. When I was young, I didn't care so much. I get married. I produce children. They go to school, go to university. My being not so responsible will not meet their adequate, their needs in the university. And they are pushed to surviving in some way. Here, there's friends. We need a life that we refer to as lamps with oil. So that this bridegroom, remember we have drawn this out of context. We want to bring it into our lives. This arrival of bridegroom, let's consider it to be a arrival of a stage of life. A arrival of a demand. A arrival of a challenge. A arrival of a situation that requires you attend to it and actually you can't avoid it. This is a doctor who has been working hard in school. You as a parent knew, I have this good daughter who is working very hard. And she is now joining high school. You know, you, you have always known that. When the daughter is joining high school, that's the time you are saying, I don't know what to do. I want to say this. We are going to pray for you. I'll pray for myself. We will pray for every member of our church. We pray for every person watching that you will live a life of wisdom. You are a lamp with oil. That whatever you come later, I could see it because I'm responsible. I will be able to attend to it. That's very important. That the blind the blind virgin had lamps and have oil in their vessels. Those, uh, the foolish, whatever, 
the foolish virgins, uh, no, the wise virgins had lamps and they heard oil in their vessels, the wise. And those who are not wise, they have caught food, as foolish, they had lamps and took no oil, oil with them. Sometimes you wonder, somebody has been working and you never had what we call retirement package. You never saved even a shilling or a dollar. And, uh, and you're living in premises. These are staff houses for your company. When you get to 60 years, maybe in Kenya, they have to give you warning. Within three months, vacate from the company's staff houses. Then, that's when you discover, I enjoyed good facilities as a staff, as a work of a company. Maybe five bedroom house with enough parking. You had a driver, driver, you had good cars, but now you are no longer working in that place. They are set, telling you, get out now, get out of this place. You are no longer our staff, you have retired, or you have terminated, we have terminated your services. Now, when you get out there, you have some shock because you never prepared for that life. And I say, I say we can, we need to have a reserve oil. Reserve oil means I need to have something that, 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 that guarantee if challenges come, if seasons will change, I sense I can be able to survive. I can be able to survive. You can't go to any bank and borrow a loan and you don't have any savings at bank. You can't go, go to any facility, credit and savings facility, and maybe you want to borrow money and you have not kept any money there. You can't go to any insurance to get determined fact that you have not accumulated all the time you worked. We need to live a responsible life. And I say by God's grace, even if life is so complicated, you feel like you can't make it, as I preach to you, God you impart on you, sober mind. For the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, it says, God did not give us spirit of fear. If you check uh, 2 Timothy, the Bible says, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of sound mind. That's what the Bible says. It's very clear. That is uh, chapter 1, verse 7. For God did not give us, God has not given us spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. And that's why even spiritually, people like Paul, when they face crisis now, like now when Paul was writing the second Timothy, he was facing the challenge and the crisis of torture. He knew very soon he would die. But this man had a reserve anointing and capacity. And he says in verse 12, For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I believed in, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him until that day. Can you imagine Paul is saying this when he is maybe few days to death? But the deserve faith, the deserve experience with Christ. I know him. When did Paul know Christ to an extent that at the point of torture, torture to death, he would say, I'm not feeling, for I know whom I believed in. We need to live such a life. Another thing is, we need to avoid what we call the night. Life has nights. I'm not talking about the night that you see when there's darkness. If you check the Bible in Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, we have a story there, and I thank Christ he gave us enough illustration to, to help our lives. Matthew chapter 13, verse 25, mm -hmm. verse 24. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, 
I would like you to note that while men slept, while the husband slept, while the family slept, while bishop slept, while the church board slept, it talks about men. It's so inclusive. Where men slept, his enemy came and threw tails among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tails were also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tails? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. Let avoid the night. Satan is a thief. And Bible talks about the chance you give to the enemy. Let me say this. Some people are neglecting. Because of that chance we gave to the enemy. An enemy can come in when you are not serious in your thinking. I remember there was this couple um, who had some property in the city. And there was a charity of school fish. And the husband suggested, let us dispose the properties we have to educate our son. And they had prime property, prime things in the city. One, first one was a house. The second one was large, two plots in prime place. And they had and another one. They had, they had about f three of them and a house. Anytime they face charge, let us dispose one. Let us sell one. They eventually ended in not having any asset any property. It was a product of their hard work, savings during the time of strength, prime time. But that's what happened. They spent all that money for your, their son and this son immediately after university became a responsible drunkard while all money was spent on him. At the old age Retirement age, when the, when the couple required to settle, they had no place to settle. They had nothing because the government terminated their services and really neglected. Why did we do this? We could have believed God for some money because we, we were strong then. One, one thing that we call night is when you failed or I failed to think critically. Critical thinking is one way of avoiding the night. Whereby you apply your mind to real, real critical thinking so that you don't give room to what maybe I can call half-baked decisions. Half-baked decisions. Whereby I did not think these suggestions was made in my family. I'm the, I'm the father. I'm the leader. If I don't think critically, whatever is suggested emotionally may cause me to end up later without uh, any, any help. Avoid the night. Avoid the night. The night can also be when you relax. Night. Most men of God, majority of bishops, majority of clergy, majority of gifted men, that moment that you as a man of God relaxed, relaxed, relaxed. You are on spiritual holiday. Some people go on both. You are on physical, psych, spiritual holiday. Where people don't even pray. You relaxed. That's when you find the funny stories about people. That time when that person relaxed, Satan attacked the church, the family. Satan attacked that person. You find some of them for the kid. You know, you've seen these stories in the news. That mighty man. There was one who was found in a motel, highway motel with a popularly known prostitute. And, and, the, and that man said, what were you doing with that 
evangelist is that apostle and the uh, and, uh, and the prostitute said I, I i thought he was a man of god but we did it that was the end of a strong well-built ministry when you relax so much remember the story in judges chapter 7 when gideon had an army about that 2000 soldiers and God said, now tell these people, whoever fears, go home. And they went home to the 2,000. And it was left with 10,000. God said, now take them to, to the river. Whoever drinks water without the consciousness for war, they bed to the water like they, they, keep, they keep down their weapons and they're just there for water. Those people are not qualified. And Gideon had to get them out of the army. They were 9,700. Only 300 were drinking water with their weapons lady, their mind awake for war, and they are drinking, drinking water, wrapping it like dog. And uh, he said, these are the people qualified to work with God. They have no fear. But in every situation, when they are eating, when they are doing whatever, they are always conscious that even at such a time, the enemy can attack. You know that story about the Israel? I think it was in late 60s, early 70s. I, you can check the record. While Israelites were on holiday, the whole nation. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm talking about the modern Israel. When Israel were attacked, it is said, I think, I think it's Egypt, a coalition of some armies, enemies in Palestine. And they were saved by only one army officer. Yes, it was powerful. You know that story? Well, even the army, Israel army was in holiday. And that man took that tank and was able to go into a strategic position and destroy the enemies, was able to hold the enemies before the army came out of that dangerous holiday. Don't be in dangerous holiday. You need to know you need to know my business is covered. My family is covered. Yes, yes, my children are covered. And that's why whenever Job would have party, birthday party for his children, what do you, what, we used to do this. He would sacrifice for them, saying, maybe my sons, maybe my sons did evil when celebrating. Can you imagine Job? This is a birthday party for one of the sons. But he was still awake. There could have been seen in this celebration. Let me make a sacrifice to God. Most likely, my children did not do God's will in the gathering. It's important to avoid this night. Avoid this night. Avoid the night when you waste time. You are a young man. You are in the years of strength. But you relax a lot. I, 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 today I was addressing an issue whereby I am President Bishop, you work so hard. You work. I said, no, this is my time to work hard. There will be days when I will not be able to wake up at, at, at five. I should work hard. You know, there's a difference between employees and vision bearers. Me, I'm a vision bearer. We are producers of vision. We are producers of systems. We are, I'm, I'm a leader of a family. I'm the producer of family assets. I need to make sure before I get old, this is settled, this is settled. I'm the one. I'm the one. We are the people who pay bills, mortgages, loans. If we relax, things are difficult. Time is coming when we'll not be able to move very fast. We can relax. It's, it's very bad. When I grow older, I retire. And I wish I go back to the young age when I remember the days, the opportunities that I lost, the seasons that I lost. I appeal to you, you people who are not very old, don't relax. Work hard. We are not like some countries in the world where people are somehow covered. Maybe medic, the medical cover is free, education is provided. Some countries, you have to make way for yourself. If your son, you get good education. We need to be very careful. And therefore we say, avoid 
wasting time. Avoid relaxing in the days of strength. Work hard. Work hard, work smart, and make sure you work hard in righteousness. Some people who work so hard, they destroy their efforts by failing to be righteous. You worked hard, but you destroyed your righteousness. You destroyed the standards of your family. You destroyed the standards of your God. Don't do that. And therefore, I said to you about the night. What's the night now? It's something that is planted at that night that you'll never avoid in latter days of your life. And maybe the generations to come after you will not avoid it. Yes, tales were planted and the owner of the, of the farm said, we have to live with them until the day of judgment. Let not have things planted in our families that we have to endure. We can't remove them. Let's be awake. Avoid sleeping. Avoid that night. When the Bible says, the enemy attacked at night. May God help me and help you as we handle this issue about when life becomes complicated. May God bless you, God cover you, and the Lord that we serve now get you out of that crisis. I raise the blood of Christ on you. I raise the mighty heart to, to come on your life and let's kill you from that horrible, critical moment. God is doing it right now. Believe it. Amen.